Okay. Um, <coughs> my name's Norm Douglas. I've been involved in Joomla for a long time. I also ride bikes. Thank you very much. And uh, when I'm not riding bikes, I uh, we build websites and uh, we also build extensions as well. Joomla extensions. We've got a, a company called J Infinity. Some of you may have come across our extensions before. Um, I thought I'd slot into here uh, about uh, migration because, uh, as these birds will tell you, uh, at some stage you will possibly need to migrate a site and um, how you migrate it can be either a, a complete disaster or, or, or somewhat of a success. My talk today is going to be 15 minutes, so I'm going to get straight into it. Uh, who, who is in the process right now of potentially migrating? <coughs> So, in my opinion, the um, uh, first question you should always ask yourself, in my opinion, is, is in fact, should you do it? Uh, there, are, there are plenty of Journal 1.5 sites in, in the world, and, and there may, may very well be plenty that continue on for a long time to come. Uh, it's not just simply, oh my goodness, there's a new version of Joomla, I must upgrade. That, that's not the case at all. In fact, I know of a, a, a prominent uh, Sydney radio station that was on Joomla 1.0, for a long time after Joomla 1.5 came out, and, and that was that was quite a big site. Um, myself, I, I've got quite a lot of sites um, that that have been uh, Joomla 1.5, some very large ones. It's very painful to go through a, a, uh, a migration. So there's a few things uh, you, you probably should need to um, to ask yourself. The first thing you must understand is, regardless of what I tell you or any other extension manufacturer tells you, there is no right mouse click to it. There is no easy solution. It's all painful. There are tools that can make it less painful. And that is the perfect honest truth. If you have a, if you have a very simple, plain Jane brochure website, 1.5 to 2.5, that's, that's somewhat easy. If you're going 2.5 to 3.0, that's becoming easier. But if you've got a highly configured 1.5 site that has lots of different components, lots of different custom modules and lots of different bits and bobs and stuff, you're going to be in for a lot of pain. So what we've found in the past is, is, is where, you can, um, uh, where you can make it easier. Uh, as I said, it is a lot of work. Uh, for those web builders out there, if you do it right, it can mean some, uh, some extra revenue for you for existing customers to convince them to, to up, upgrade. Um, obviously, you do need a valid reason as well. and uh, so. Between you and your client, or if you're your, your own client, obviously there needs to be a business case surrounding it. Don't just go do it for the hell of it, because it's a lot of pain. Uh, okay, so you want to migrate, so now, now what? It, it's, it's often a really good time to start thinking about how your site is structured. And I'm not just talking about what categories the, the, the articles are in, I'm talking about potentially the menu structure, I'm talking about the URL structure, uh, it's one of the things that often I, it, it staggers me when I see people go through a great big migration process, build a new site, and they don't consider about their SEO juice. We've heard lots about that today. They don't consider about uh, what their menu, what their URL structure was before, and what it's going to be like after. Um, you really need to consider that, and, and because you're considering that, it, it's actually a good time to potentially consider: uh, Did I do it right in the first place? Is there something I can do better? Um, Hands up who manages a 1.5 site. Great. Uh, so uh, you'll all be familiar with the, uh, the notion of sections and categories. And when I first started in Joomla, uh, I was forever trying to explain how that works. You know, we used to talk about, okay, imagine a newspaper, you know, sections there, and in the category, you know, and obviously with 2.5, it's all the categories and subcategories and nested stuff, and it's wonderful. Uh, that's how it should have been. Um, obviously, that's going to be potentially a big shift when you move from your 1.5 site to 2.5 and beyond, and 4 and whatever we're going to have, um, is that's often a great time to restructure your content. Quick story, we had a, a large client, we had a really big site, and literally their site was a complete dog's breakfast. And it was a great exercise for the client themselves also to go through their content and, and see how they can improve it. So that's definitely something uh, that you need to do. Uh, you may also want to look at reskinning because what you're about to see in a moment uh, doesn't include reskinning. Reskinning is what I call, uh, what most people call templating. Uh, that that is generally a completely separate beast. A completely separate beast. So don't, don't confuse how your site looks after you've migrated to 1.5 compared to what's in the site when you've migrated from 1.5. Um, 
And, uh, and it's also a great time to think about, and, and I, this is how I get in the responsive word, you see. Think about, maybe it wants to be responsive. See, now, uh, one, because I used responsive in my talk. Uh, and what can be a good plan is, uh, is you can use a tool. Um, we, uh, we, we build sites, we build quite a, quite a lot of sites, we're lucky, we've got a good business, and uh, what we found is, is we were getting lots and lots of clients now that we needed to migrate. So we were pulling our hair out with SQL statements all over the shop and you know, migrating this and moving that, and, and you know, we were succeeding sometimes. Uh, we're, we're really lucky that we've got a uh, super talented coder in Anton, and, and Anton and ourselves, we, we built our own tool, which I'll show you shortly. Uh, there are many tools on the market. We did try a lot of them, and, and there are some very good ones. I'm certainly not saying ours is the only one. Um, some are better than others. Um, in our opinion, what some of them lacked was the ability to step it out. And what I mean by that is, you might have your old 1.5 site, that you might think, you know what, the menu structure, it's just, it's just a dog's breakfast saying I'll leave it. So actually, I just want the content. Or maybe I just want the articles from that category. Oh, that category over there, I never use them anymore. I just don't leave them. And, and that was some of the stuff that we felt was missing from some of the some of the existing migrators. Some form of, if you like, granularity. You know, where you can where you can choose what you export and a few other little bits and bobs. Um, uh, apparently, it's called a. Uh, I'm a web builder. I'm an integrator. It's a part-time coder this much. Apparently it's called a split pass asynchronous processor. That's what our thing does. Any coders in the room know what that means? Good, there you go. Point for you, Anton. Um, and we've done lots of it. In fact, we've done so much of it. Uh, when we first launched our tool under our brand name, we broke it. We broke it really well. In fact, a few clients helped us break it. Uh, a client came along and purchased our extension uh, before, and they didn't tell us that they had 400,000 articles to uh, to migrate, and uh, they soon broke it. So then we had to rebuild it from the ground up. But you know, we, we actually had to break it in order to make it better to what it is now. Uh, and we've also used a very simple process in using CSVs. Uh, everyone know what a CSV is? You can normally open that in an Excel spreadsheet, which means partway through the migration process, you can open it up in an Excel spreadsheet, see all your content. You can even do some fancy find replaces and whatever else you might want to do as you're uh, exporting it. Uh, so let's have a, have a little little go at, at what we find. So I've got a couple of sites here. Uh, these are live sites. Uh, well, they're not live currently because I'm sitting on the laptop. But they're live examples. One's a 1.5 site and the other one's a 2.5 site. The 1.5 site has K2 in it as well. K2 users in the room? Great. Are you continuing? No, I shouldn't. Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> Um, so essentially our tool is uh, on our site called uh, Jayinfinity, it's called uh, Jayo Migrator, we had to think long and hard about that name, so that was, took forever. Okay. Um, so you install it, I won't go through that, I'm sure you can uh, imagine what happens. Uh, log in. So we'll imagine that uh, we've got a couple of different examples um, that we want to uh, potentially um, uh, selectively export a 1.5 site. If we wanted to just press every button that's available there, you'll see in a sec, then it will just do it all together. One of the um, those uh, technical boffins in the room will know that um, uh, unique identifiers of each article, each module ID, each menu ID, that had significant changes between 1.5 and 2.5. We've worked really hard at that. We've worked really hard at getting that right. So category IDs and stuff, making sure we map them to the new ones. Uh, we have to add some zeros occasionally, but essentially it's really important. So if you pull over your menu, then you have the blog category pointing to that category. When it goes into the new one, it'll be still pointing to the new category, even though the, uh, the, the IDs may have changed. Uh, that, that's a really complex process. Way beyond my head, I just know how the thing is meant to work. Um, so we've got a couple of different options. Hopefully that microphone will still hear me. Um, from a 1.5, we, uh, we made the buttons nice and big for you. So you know, we've got an export course. Uh, so we have lots of different options. I, I won't go through every single one, but essentially what it allows you to do is either go right down the bottom and say, process everything, and it'll create a nice big zip file that has a CSV, lots of CSVs in it with all your data in there, ready to be imported. Uh, 
If you don't want to do that, what you can do instead is to go through and say, I want to export um, articles, I want to export uh, categories. Did I install that new one? So we can choose what we want to export, and then once we get to the stage where we want to export, we click on the export button, it produces a zip file, and then we bring it in, which I've already prepared for you, because it does take a little bit of time. On a 2.5, it's a similar process. We click on articles, we can either do, uh, we can say everything and leave everything uh, untipped. Or we could choose selective, and I can say I just want to export go back, just those ones, that category. And then when we come in the other way, as you'll see in a minute, we can also then selectively choose a new category it can go into. So that's where you can go into a you know a whole restructure of your content. You've got categories over here that you created once upon a time six years ago that make no sense anymore. And so we go to our new site and we create a whole new category structure. It's nested and it's nice, we don't have sections and categories, and then we export out of this category selectively and import into the new one. It's a little bit slower, but in our, in our experience, it's, it's far better. Um, so we'll just go through how that works. Um, we'll just say export articles, categories, um, files. I'll leave files alone because it's got a lot of images. User group, users. Menu items, menu types. And you can see there's export K2 here as well. We'll leave that one alone for a second. That's it. So then we click on export content. We should get some uh, progress bars down here. Bit of think music. We then in, install the, uh, I've just got a plain Jane Joomla 3 installed here. We install Migrator on the Joomla 3 site. And once it's complete, it'll give you some feedback there. It'll also allow you to view the log. Uh, the log will tell you um, what it's created and any potential problems it had. And then download the migration zip. Going to Migrator on the Joomla 3. Upload the zip. I'm working locally here so it won't take uh, too long. Unpacks it, gets it ready. And again, most of what you're seeing here is after ourselves going through many, many different um, uh, trials and tribulations of getting this right. It tells you what it's about to import. So you you know, it looks good, no problem. Um, and then we say uh, that we'll just go ahead and import the articles. This is where we could choose different um, uh, options. If we were exporting on a granular basis, in other words, just a few groups of articles alone, this is where we could say, okay, I want to override the category that they're going to go into and choose a new category, but we'll just leave that alone uh, for a sec. So you actually have to set up the category in the new site first? No, no, no. What I'm saying, if you want to selectively export from one, so you've got your old site here, mm -hmm. and you've got categories A, B, and C, and those A, B, and Cs no longer make sense, and you're ex you've created a new category called X, Y, and Z, and you want to e export or import category A or articles from A into Z, mm -hmm. that's how you do that. that. That's what I meant. You have to have actually set up the categories first in the new site. Correct. But if I just export them and import them, it'll create the existing categories. Okay. Yeah. And it, and it obviously considers, going from 1.5 site, it considers sections as parent categories, categories as subcategories of those. So we'll go menus. Menu types, user group, users, 
Uh, due to the way we've, we've built it, we've also made it um, quite easy for ourselves to extend it. So, believe it or not, while we were sitting here uh, this morning and we were talking about an Anton Knight, we said, wouldn't it be cool if we could go K2 items to Joomla articles? So, quite literally, with about five lines of code, Anton built those two that you see there. So, they're, they're brand new features. Um, so, that's, that's quite cool that you can change it from K2 into Joomla articles. So, just make sure that's all right. Looks good. Import again gives you some feedback. There again. It's not working on that. My local MAMP install confuses the Ajax or something. When you're doing really big installs of really large sites, we've got a little function here where you can view the live, the active log. So if you wanted to, you know, if it was taking a long time and you want to make sure it was actually doing something. You can view the live log as it's going along. Um, we did a recent, um, recently we did a, a very large uh, John Social install. It was one of our own sites, had about 15,000 users and over 600,000 activities. And we built the, uh, the plugin for it. And uh, you know, it does take a long time to do it. It's, it certainly wasn't a, uh, in terms of it, it, it processing the data. Um, it probably took, I think it was about 40 minute process. So having that live log to make sure that it was actually working. So again, we can view the log and make sure that uh, it's gone through and we can go through there and look for any errors. Uh, and we should find that uh, we now have uh, all these articles here uh, and the categories that they've been brought into, they're all new articles. That's not obviously the plain Jane. Um, and we've got the, uh, the new menu items all created here. Yep. Menu items created here, all the menu items, and we're ready to go. If we go to the, uh, the home, again, we're not talking about... Um, oh, it's probably because it's got the different home button. So we're not talking about skins, we're not talking about, um, you know, templates being imported and exported, because that's just, well, I won't say can't do it, but it's just fraught with danger. You know, most, most templates have some form of customization, and you'll just, you'll eat your own head trying to, trying to make those happen. Uh, so, there it is. The categories, the articles, the menu items, obviously uh, the users, users would have been imported, the user groups, um, and that type of thing. Um, so, that's, that's our extension. And uh, we've, as I say, we we build about 40 sites a year. I'm not saying that's a brag. I'm saying that, that because we're we're constantly doing uh, migrations ourselves. That's why we built that tool, and it certainly helped us a lot. Uh, the key, the take home here is, I'm getting wound up, is make sure you plan your migration. Don't just simply think you're going to flick a switch and your site's going to be migrated. You need to plan it carefully. Think about what, in fact, you're going to migrate. Any questions? Questions. Does it do 1.5 to 3? Yes, yes, that's, in fact, that's, that's often the, uh, the, the most significant way. And uh, if you were doing that, what we would advise is you do it to a plain Jane install. So in other words, you, ch you choose the one down the bottom, process all the exporters, because that, what that does, if you start doing it independently, because 1.5 to 3 has the biggest change in the, in the uh, uh, IDs, if you process all, it'll reset all the IDs for you in your new install. Cost. Yep. Sorry. Cost. 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 Uh, well, first of all, everyone here, uh, SJ, SJD 2013, uh, gets a 50% uh, discount on all of ours. Our membership start at $22. Is it on the, uh, the promo side? Not on the promo. No. So you need to take... take it. Yep. Say it again. SJD 2013, 50% off any any of our subscriptions. Any other questions? No? Planning your migration. Don't just leave it till it's way too late. Good. Thank you very much, Norm.